Welcome to In Your Neighborhood. I'm your host, Sharla Brown, and on today's show, we are talking with the Lakehead Transportation Museum Society. My guest today is Charlie Brown. Charlie's the president at the Society. Welcome to the show. Thank you. So tell me what the Lakehead Transportation Museum Society is. Well, the Lakehead Transportation Museum Society, or short form, LTMS, and you can see right. it right there, is, uh, it's, we're a nonprofit historical society. Uh, we're dedicated to the collection, preservation, and displays of uh, uh, transportation artifacts of significance to Thunder Bay and area. Uh, we have a very diverse board uh, of a number of individuals from different areas of transportation, and uh, we're, we're hoping to bring back the history of transportation to Thunder Bay for the public. Awesome. So when, when did this all get started, and, and how did the idea of starting the society come about? Well, it, it's interesting. It's, it's a little bit of a, a journey for us. Uh, uh, not going back too far, but in 2015, I approached uh, City Council for the opportunity to chair uh, a Transportation Heritage Committee. And they said, yeah, go ahead and try that out. So uh, we formed uh, the Transportation Transportation Heritage Committee uh, and we had a number of public meetings throughout the year in 2015 and really really a good turnout from the public and what we came out of that was is we really should start protecting our transportation heritage. Uh, we've got a number of really significant uh, transportation artifacts in Thunder Bay right now. Some are owned by the city, some privately, some are partially owned. Uh, the James Whalen Tug, uh, you're probably familiar with down the Cam River Park is one. Uh, the Via Train is another down the Cam River Park. There's the caboose at the marina. Uh, there's two restored Brill trolley buses who are being st re uh, stored at uh, Thunder Bay Transit right now. And there, there really wasn't a home for these and we were starting to see them, uh, you know, uh, fall to disrepair and, and that kind of a thing. So we, we got the public together uh, and out of those meetings what happened was is there really should be a central location or a society set up for the preservation of these artifacts. So um, we went back to City Council and we said this is what we think we, we should be doing and in early 2016 last year we formed the Lakehead Transportation Museum Society. Uh, I am the president now <laughs> and um, uh, out of that, what we did is uh, we we became a, a nonprofit. Or I already said that a nonprofit, but we. Um uh, we, we got a charter and uh, we became incorporated with the Ontario um, Historical Society in June of 2016. Uh, we're uh, in the application process with Canada Revenue uh, for a charitable status and uh, we're working towards a whole bunch of uh, interesting projects right now. Awesome. So I'm curious as to how you got involved. So that's, that's a lot of work to step up and decide to do this. I'm curious as to kind of your background and what kind of drove you to want to get this all rolling. Well, uh, my own background's a little bit interesting, is uh, uh, I'm a retired transit worker. Uh, I, I worked for Thunder Bay Transit uh, for just over 30 years. Uh, I was also the, I was a bus driver, so I was also the president of the union for, oh, about 12 years, and on the, the union's executive board for about 20. Uh, back in 2001, um, I was in a meeting uh, with uh, management, a labor management meeting, and we were talking about restoring some of the buses at Thunder Bay, uh, not restoring old buses, but getting new ones for the fleet. And there was a comment made by somebody in management that uh, instead of the new buses, we should get some brills. And I didn't have a clue what they were talking about. So I said, what are you talking about? And they said, well, the brill trolleys what that used to run here in Port Arthur and Fort William. So I said, well, uh, I, I'm still not sure what you're talking about. And they said, well, there, there's a whole bunch of them that are for sale right now, and they're getting rid of them, and they're out on the West Coast. And I said, well, maybe what we should do is we should get a couple of those and uh, restore one in the Port Arthur colors and the Fort William colors because they ran on two separate systems, and uh, bring them back, restore them, and then we can use them to promote transit and uh, pr promote, uh, you know, just transportation in the city. Well, that got a, a pretty good laugh out of it, and that's, that's how that all happened. A couple of weeks later, we had a new GM in town. He ended up to be the city manager afterwards. I don't know if you remember him, Bob Petrie. Mm -hmm. He came in, and I proposed the same idea to him, and he said he would seriously look at it. So he did. He came back and said, sorry, Charlie, but it's not in the budget, which is not unusual mm -hmm. in the city. But he said, what you could do is go to city council. And I said, okay. So that's exactly what I did. I went to city council. 
council and proposed it in 2001, and they loved the idea. So what we had asked for was $12,000 at the time uh, to uh, purchase them and then transport them back. And since we had the facilities at Transit at the time, we would do the restoration work uh, free of charge within the union and uh, with our workers. And uh, that's exactly what happened. They, they cut me a check for 12 grand. I went out and I purchased these two buses. And what we did is we found these buses out in Richmond, BC. And what happened was is that is, is all the Brill buses in Canada, almost all of them, were made here at the Canadian Car Foundry down on Montreal wow. Street, which is now the Bombardier plant. Uh, they were made uh, just after World War II. Uh, during World War II, uh, the Canadian car uh, plant was making all kinds of war effort uh, vehicles. Uh, primarily, you might remember the, the Hawker Hurricane, which was really instrumental in the Battle of Britain and uh, a very service, uh, serviceable uh, plane that, uh, for the war effort. And, but after the war, they were going to shut the plant down. So what happened was is that uh, they decided, well, instead of shutting the plant down, what we'll do is we'll retool. So they made uh, a deal with uh, the American Car Foundry in Philadelphia, who were the Brill manufacturers down there, and they started making Brill trolleys here, right here in, uh, in Old Fort William and now Thunder wow. Bay. So from there, what happened was is that uh, they sold those and replenished transit fleets all across Canada. And like I said, they ran here in Port Arthur and in Fort William. Then they also sold them to places like Saskatoon and Regina and Calgary and Edmonton and Vancouver, Halifax, Toronto. And they were sold across Canada. And those, those trolleys were state of the art. They were absolutely excellent buses. But the thing is, is they only ran for so many years. And what happened was, is they got displaced in the early 70s uh, by diesel buses. And here, we got rid of ours in the early 70s, and we didn't save any. We scrapped them all. So when I'd heard about this, uh, what had happened was is the buses that we actually have restored and brought back, these were the buses that were built here. They were sold to Saskatoon. Saskatoon got out of the business as well in about the mid-70s. They went to diesel. Then they were sold to Vancouver. Then Vancouver got out of the business about the mid-80s. And then they were left about 250 of them in this mm -hmm. trolley graveyard in Richmond, B.C. And then in 2001, to get back to the whole story, is that's where they were finally going to get rid of all of these buses. So when we found this out, I proposed what I had proposed to bring them back, and that's how we get the buses. So uh, we brought them back, we started the project, and it took a little while, but we finally got the project going, and, and that's how we started all of this. And in the meantime, I've been looking for a place over the last 16 years for a place to, to uh, display the buses, and I keep going back to the city council, and they haven't been too responsive about an actual location, but that's how we ended up into getting to the, uh, the, the idea of, of, a, of a heritage committee and then a transportation museum. So it's been a long process. It's about, about uh, 16 or 17 years right now we've been working on it. So that's a little of my history. Yeah, absolutely. And um, so many great uh, projects, and I can totally see where the need would be to then have a society that says, hey, you know, we have these incredible, um, you know, landmarks, you know, in our, that should be, you know, people should know the history of it because I, I'm fascinated just hearing that story. So uh, we're going to take a quick break, but we're going to be right back with Charlie and learn more about some of the projects that they're working on. Be right back.